All right, we're going to be talking about uh, the issue of uh, the uh, census and, of course, the uh, government indeed announcing that uh, census uh, 2022 is uh, to uh, get uh, started. And we've been asked indeed by the Statistician General uh, to, uh, in fact, to be ready for a census 2022. And uh, we're going to discuss uh, this uh, further. Let's take the discussion forward when I'm joined via Zoom by Kwesi Kwapra from the Center for Advances uh, Studies of African Society. We're also joined by Jacqueline Harvey from Human Sciences Research Council and Lance Craig Schultz from the Pan-South African Language Board uh, to speak to us about the importance of language when conducting a census. Well, a very uh, good afternoon to you all and thank you very much for taking the time uh, to join us uh, here on uh, SABC News. Thank you. Great to be here. All right. I'll start with the representative of uh, the uh, Pan-South African Language Board as we are particularly talking about the issue um, of language at this time. What is your view on the importance really of language used in, in census in general? We know that, uh, you know, for years the English language has, uh, has been used and one wonders, uh, you know, how that makes things easier or worse off actually for the majority of uh, South Africans as we are to conduct the census. Firstly, a very good afternoon to you, Flo, and to all of your viewers. I think what, what the, the census allows us to do is to also just take stock and to ensure that all of the other languages uh, that have been marginalized and are used to a much lesser extent, that we do not disadvantage them in as much as how election campaigns are done, uh, that all members and all sectors of society in their formations do have an opportunity it is a, a very complex task, as you can understand, uh, because by the very design, we've got 11 official languages. Yeah. We're currently also trying to adopt South African Sign Language. Uh, we then also have a myriad of dialects, and we also have some other peripheral languages that we also are affording support status to. So I think what is important is to ensure that no member of society that is contributing towards the census is in any way uh, prohibited or is in any way lessened in terms of the information so that we ensure that we've got great statistical coverage and accuracy. And of course, the importance of census is that data gets used in, in terms of our geospatial planning and how all of these other socioeconomic issues then manifest itself in society. And we'd like to think that language as a preserve is a function of that uh, uh, census gathering. Yeah. Uh, let me bring you in, uh, Kwezi Kwapra, um, from the Center for the Advanced Studies of uh, African Society. I can't, I can't imagine that you're necessarily happy about uh, uh, the fact that, you know, English remains a uh, dominant language. But, of course, we have to balance out, as Lance was alluding, to the fact that, you know, at the end of the day in South Africa, we're sitting with 11 official uh, languages. And though we'd want to equally respect all languages, how practical is it? Um, although it is important in a situation like this, a census where we're really talking about a large number, or, or in fact or the whole country being counted, and really we should find ourselves in a situation where we're able to incorporate uh, all languages. Is this practical? Are we able to? And what are your views uh, in terms of the fact that English has been and will be the dominant uh, language? Well, I think your last sentence is most unfortunate that English is automatically going to be the language. English is mother tongue for less than 15% of the population of South Africa. Now, the first question you must, where else in the world, mm. in the developed world, in Africa, no, no, in Asia, Latin America, United States, North America, or Europe, you have a situation in which the languages spoken by only 10 to 15 percent of the population becomes the language which must be utilized for purposes like this census for the population. You wouldn't find any in Europe like that. You would in America, in North America, it's it's not like that. In Latin America, it's not like that. It's only in Africa, in Asia even, in former colonial Asia, it is, the story is different. Why do we still persist in elevating English to that level of dominance in, in, in Africa? 
That's the question. That's the real question we must ask ourselves. What does it mean when we do that? Yeah. What does it imply when we do that? We mustn't assume that, of course, because there are so many languages, therefore, take for example, let me give you some examples. Take for example, a country like Switzerland. The largest language there, spoken by about 63% of the population, mm. is German, followed by French which is in the region of about 20-25%, followed by Italian, which is much less, about 12%, followed by Romansh, which is spoken by about 5-6% six, of the population. They make sure that all these languages, in spite of the fact that they have even small numbers, have the same range the same facilities mm. to reach the users, their constituencies, their cultural constituencies. Yeah. Now, you look at a place like Belgium, they have three languages. There's Flemish, which is Dutch, there's French, and there's a very small proportion of a population, less than 10%, which is German. They ensure that they all have equal rights of access to the media and everything else in their own languages. The fact that we have dominance in English, it's not God-given, it's not God-sent. It is the result of colonial history. And if we say that we are free, then we must correct these practices. Yeah. Because otherwise, otherwise we dis disempower the overwhelming majority of the population. Yeah. All right. Let, let's let's bring you in, uh, Jacqueline, um, from the Human Sciences Research Council. We're aware, of course, that uh, the Human Sciences uh, Research Council does indeed undertake to and, and promotes research um, that is that is often a, a large scale and and, and multi uh, multi year and collaborative uh, in in nature. What sort of uh, research or what have you done in terms of looking into how a census is conducted and particularly, um, you know, in relation to or pertaining to the subject matter that we're discussing today? which is the, the, the issue of a language. What is your uh, contribution to this uh, particular topic as uh, the HSRC? Well, the HSRC, as you said, has conducted several studies. For example, the South African Social Attitude Survey, and that has provided a, a wealth of data, and it does ask about attitudes towards certain languages, which languages should be used in education, for example, yeah. which my colleague Stephen Gord and I have written on. And we do um, other research on mostly the areas I work in is around education and the impact of language on test results, for example, amongst other contextual factors. So we look at quite a broad range. And I would just like to add on a couple of points here that while there is a, a preference for English due to uh, perceived value that it has and possible opportunities it opens up for you, which we all, of course, want South Africans to participate in. For example, if they wanted to um, study at an English institution overseas or any other opportunity that they would like. But importantly, it is always better to first be taught and develop your home language. And that is the foundation and the mm. gateway to development of another language. Yeah. Lance, I'd like to bring you in here. You know, um, important uh, points brought up by uh, Kwesi and Jacqueline here. Um, uh, Kwesi talking about uh, the fact that, you know, if we're not treating languages equally and giving the same range and uh, facility to, to, to our languages, we run the risk of disenfranchising and disempowering many of, our, uh, m many of our citizens here in South Africa. And Jacqueline talking about, you know, also just balancing out this conversation, the fact that, you know, English is uh, 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 preferred and, and obviously that's where the opportunity Opportunities are right now. All of us here are speaking English in this uh, particular panel. What do you What do you make of that? The fact that you know we are possibly, and and maybe we have, maybe we're guilty of the fact that we have indeed already disenfranchised and disempowered uh, uh, many in our country. Anyway, perhaps my uh, preface to your, your your comment is that uh, 
the end game is really in our hands uh, and it's in as much by choice as opposed to it being by design that we default uh, into English. Uh, so the, the issue about the marginalization of other languages and the diminished status that it appears the other languages have is squarely within the Pan South African Language Board's uh, ambit uh, in terms of our mandate and in terms of our programs as well. Yeah. So the programs are structured largely to, to render uh, promotion and protection activities uh, for all of these languages and it is really underpinned by equitability. How do we ensure that languages, and if we look at the bodies of work that is done uh, within the lexicons, the lithographical work that gets done, a lot of it seems to be focused on English Afrikaans uh, at this point in time. Mm, mm. So our work also uh, spans the formulation of dictionaries, the lexicographical bodies of work dealing with complaints related to, to language, the quality assurance of the various bodies of work, uh, and funding various projects uh, through the various provincial language committees. What is also important is to understand the role of our education system. Uh, it starts, and I agree with uh, Jacqueline as well, that uh, one of the things we're trying to promote is mother tongue, and that will then allow us to have multilingualism before we start looking at, at other languages. And, and that is something we would like to, to also inculcate. And the work that is being done in our departments of basic education as well as higher education is very important. Uh, and there's a lot of support that we are providing to that. Importantly also is to note some of the languages and the preservation of that. I'm talking specifically to work that we're doing with certain language groupings like the Khoi, the San, the Nama, uh, the Ngu that we know that uh, uh, we're doing quite a lot of uh, very advanced work to try and ensure that we secure that body of work also. Yeah. And I wish to add also that it also becomes important for civil society and the private sector uh, to come on board because community groups can contribute to various library programs uh, and initiatives, the distribution of literature, etc. But to ramp up uh, and to get uh, some scalability with what we're doing, we really require communities, the private sector to also come on board. Uh, with all of these initiatives within the linguistic space. Yeah. You know, it's unfortunate that we are running out of time, but I'm going to just stretch it a little bit. I know my producers won't be happy, but um, let me uh, pose the same question to you, uh, Kwezi and Jacqueline, as we wrap up our, our conversation. And Jacqueline, I'm, I'm raising this question just based on what you said in terms of, you know, English being the preferred language, but then also you did qualify it by saying that we need to uh, develop our languages and first taught uh, at home our own languages. And I think maybe let me start with you, Kwezi, where I'm asking what more can be done then uh, uh, to protect and promote the indigenous languages you seem to be saying listen we can't be just saying that in you know i made the mistake myself of saying look this is how it's going to continue that english will be the main uh, subject but but surely the fault is on you know our part too by not indeed promoting um our own languages and and, and protecting them and, and passing them on uh, um to to children early on and letting them be their first uh, uh, languages as, as jacqueline was alluding to well I think I think the question is larger than we're addressing it here. Mm -hmm. um, there's reasons, but for as long as three quarters of the population of a country have their languages cuddled off in little corners in the domestic terrain, yeah, and allow English in perpetuity to dominate then people will by all means always choose the language which appears to have the strongest leverage socially that's english so until we start correcting that fundamental mistake that fundamental discrepancy that disempowering condition that we have historically inherited we we're not going to make very much headway english is a language of status and power and wealth because it was made so it was it not not something inherent in the language it is because socially we have created a situation in which that language is the strongest and the most powerful and, the, and therefore has higher status than other languages. If we correct the basis of that reality, then we'll be addressing 
a problem. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Jacqueline, just to uh, close off then uh, the conversation, I mean, you did mention uh, that, you know, we need to uh, develop our languages first uh, at home and first taught uh, at home. Where do we begin in, in implementing this? I mean, we can't really, uh, you know, tell people what to do in their own homes. And, and a lot of homes, I mean, uh, have English as, 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 as their, their, their main language. And, and some children just kind of latch on to um, English. You know, that's what they taught. Uh, they taught English at school and they taught with English uh, at school or other subjects so that's generally the language that uh, they latch on to how do we uh, push other languages given given this this issue well i do agree with what Krizia said in that english itself as on its own has no value other than what we assign to it yeah so if we add value to other languages and we promote them as a society and that is involves programs in other languages a radio broadcast, TV broadcast, mm. books, um, a big part of learning to read or developing your language is through text and uh, um, parents reading to their children. And so that kind of adding value will then trickle down and the, eventually the languages will become more equal when English is not the only way to get ahead or the only, sorry, only perceived way yes. to get ahead. Yeah. And... Um, a lot of that can also stem from how we conduct the education system. So what is our language in schools? What policies do we want to incorporate there? Mm. All right. Jacqueline, thank you very much uh, for that. And let me thank uh, the panel uh, for your time. Thanks to you, Kwesi Kwapra, from uh, the Center for the Advanced Studies of African Society, as well as uh, Lance uh, Craig Schultz from Pan South African Language Board, as well as uh, Jacqueline Harvey from the Human Sciences Research uh, Council. Thank you to all of you uh, for participating in this uh, conversation. And I hope we'll certainly have uh, more of these uh, types of conversations. Thank you. Thank you.